How's it going, Illuminators? Today, I'm gonna to be showing you guys how to summarize your snowblower. Now, this isn't going to be a full-on maintenance video, as I do have plenty of those on my channel already. Basically, today's video is going to cover how to set up your snowblower for summer storage so that you can ensure your snowblower fires up on the first or second pull at the beginning of the next winter season. So with that being said, let's get right into it. So as we near the end of March here, we've pretty much fully transitioned into springtime. And with that, we then transition to fixing lawnmowers and riding mowers. But before we do that, I have to summarize my snowblowers to prepare them for the summer storage months ahead so that we can ensure these things fire up first or second pull this upcoming winter. Because even if you put some fresh fuel into your snowblower, in December or even in January, even February, that fuel over the next few months as your snowblower sits in summer storage, the fuel in the fuel tank is going to break down and that fuel is probably also going to be in the carburetor and you're most likely going to have a gummed up main jet preventing your snowblower from starting in maybe about eight months, which is the upcoming winter season. So we're gonna be talking about how to prepare your machine for summer storage. And it is fairly simple, but it can be a little bit different depending on what type of machine you have. Now, when speaking about fuel in your fuel tank, you most likely run pump gas from your local gas station. Now here in Ontario, Canada, the government basically mandated that every grade of gasoline sold here in Ontario now needs to contain ethanol, which means the 91 octane ethanol free fuel that I used to purchase is no longer available. Ethanol being a corn based alcohol will literally attract moisture from the air and will end up binding to that separating from the fuel and going to the bottom of your fuel tank which on the majority of engines that are gravity fed the fuel line sits at the bottom of the fuel tank thus you're going to have water in your carburetor. If you wanna see a video on how I used to test the fuel that I purchased to ensure that it was ethanol free, I can link that video in the top right of your screen. So one of the tips that I'm gonna give you is you do not wanna store your equipment with pump gas from the gas station that contains ethanol in it. That's a big no-no and it's one of the top reasons why I always get so many lawnmowers in the springtime and why I get so many snowblowers in the wintertime that don't start, ethanol breaks down, and it gums up the carburetors. So you have a couple options here. You can either drain the tank dry, also drain the carburetor dry, or you can run a canned engineered fuel that are generally designed to last up to two years without breaking down. Now in front of me, I have two cans of engineered fuel. This stuff here is made by Gulf Pro Fuels and I just wanted to give a big shout out to Small Motor Service for sending this our way. This Gulf Pro Fuels is an alkalate engineered fuel and it has been designed to last for up to five years in the can or once you open the cap, it's designed to last for two years. And I can promise you that that is true because I've had canned fuel that has started a snowblower after sitting for two and a half years but at the three year mark, it would not start. So their claims that this engineered fuel lasts for two years is absolutely true. Now you can usually purchase this engineered fuel in either a four stroke or four cycle straight fuel, or you can get the Alkalit 2T, which is a premix at a 50 to one ratio. So that has your oil already mixed into it for your two stroke lawn and garden equipment, such as weed trimmers, hedge trimmers, and chainsaws. Also leaf blowers as well. Now, regardless of what kind of canned fuel you want to run, this stuff isn't going to be all that inexpensive. This runs for about $10 a can here in Canada. I've seen it go from anywhere from about $9 all the way up to $12, depending on the brand. But I would highly recommend that you purchase an alkalate engineered fuel, which is only going to be offered by a few of the engineered or the canned fuel manufacturers, Gulf Pro Fuels being one of them. Because of that cost, canned fuel is not something that I run throughout the season. I run regular pump gas in the highest octane that I could only because it was ethanol free. But as I mentioned earlier, we can no longer get the ethanol free fuel. So I will now be purchasing whatever grade of fuel offers the least amount of ethanol. But again, I won't be storing my equipment with that fuel in it. Now, whether you want to purchase a canned fuel for your equipment or whether you wanna just simply run your equipment dry and not have any fuel in it at all, 
there is still going to be some fuel remaining in the carburetors and that's what we're going to talk about next because if you're running your equipment dry you absolutely want to get all of that pump gas fuel with ethanol out of the carburetor but if you are going to run the can fuel you want to get as much fuel out of your equipment before adding the can fuel so that the can fuel is not diluted now on my snowblower here, you guys saw that I did add a fuel shutoff valve to it. Sideways is on and up and down is off. So the fuel is currently off. But if I pump on the primer bulb over there, I will hear a little bit of fuel. And that's because there is still going to be fuel in the fuel line as well as inside of the carburetor. So what we could do is with the shutoff valve in the off position, we could fire this up and run the carburetor dry. Now, to be honest, I don't even know if this is going to start with the small amount of fuel that's in there, but we're going to give it a try anyways. That's pretty much it, guys. Not a lot of fuel in there. Pretty much just hearing air now, but I'll give it one more pull. We've got that carburetor pretty much dry. This will ensure that 90% of the fuel from the carburetor as well as from the fuel line up to the fuel shutoff valve is drained out. But like I said, there's still going to be a little bit of fuel in the bowl of the carburetor. So how do we get that out? Well, that brings us back to these three carburetors that I've set up here. This is going to be a Nikki style carburetor off of a Briggs & Stratton engine. This is the exact carburetor that I currently have on the snowblower that you saw there. And it is not drainable. So you do not have a drain plug at the bottom. So draining this carburetor is pretty much impossible. So all we can do is turn the shutoff valve to the off position and run the carburetor dry. And there still might be a little bit of fuel inside of that carburetor. So what we'll do is we'll drain the fuel tank and I'm gonna show you guys how to do that on that particular snowblower. And then we can add the Gulf Pro Fuels, turn the fuel valve on and it will dilute that little bit of pump gas in there. And then we're gonna start up the engine and let it run until all of that pump gas is burned off. In the case of an MTD snowblower, such as a Cub Cadet or a Troy Built, you guys are gonna have two 10 millimeter screws on the bottom of the carburetor. Now, the one in the center here is what holds the bowl onto the carburetor. Ideally, you never want to loosen that or remove it because when the carburetor is mounted to the engine, the bowl is facing down. And if you loosen this off and pull the bowl down, the bowl gasket can pop out of the little groove that it sits in. And then I've seen a lot of times where people have tried to reinstall the bowl and they pinch the gasket. And then the carburetor leaks and it ends up coming here for repair. So what I would recommend is you only open up the screw or the bolt there on the 45 degree angle. And then what you can do is just let that drain into a little cup or a plastic tray underneath the carburetor because on a lot of the Cub Cadets, you're going to see that carburetor exposed on the bottom side there. And then to get all of the fuel out of this carburetor, what you can do is slightly tilt your snowblower to the side to get the remaining small bit of fuel out of that bowl. But if you don't have an MTD snowblower, maybe you have a Craftsman or any other kind of snowblower that has the Tecumseh Snow King series engine. That's gonna be like your HMSK eight, nine and 10 horsepower engine. On a lot of the carburetors, whether they are adjustable like this one or non-adjustable, so you'll just see the bolt head there, some of them may have this little push button drain. And what that does is it opens a little hole inside of the bowl of your carburetor and basically you can just press that button down to drain the small amount of fuel that's left in the bowl. That's always nice to see. By draining out the carb completely, you don't necessarily have to spend the money on the expensive can fuel. Now, if you guys would have watched the video series on this snowblower that I did, which I can also link in the top right of your screen, you'll know that when I went to adjust the governor and we had this engine running, I didn't use the factory fuel tank because the governor mechanism sits under the fuel tank. I had a separate fuel tank that I used. So this particular Briggs & Stratton fuel tank that I have here is completely dry. There's absolutely no fuel in it whatsoever. And it's pretty much just pumping air now when I press on the primer. 
Now, let's say that you didn't have an empty tank like I did. Let's say you have a full tank of fuel. You still ran the carburetor dry, but you gotta get that fuel out of the fuel tank. Now, we do have the shutoff valve in the off position, so I'm gonna show you guys how to drain one of these out because it's super simple. Using my trim removal tool, we can just pry right up on that and then loosen off the thumb screws. Once you get all that removed, lift up, pull off the cover here, and here is our fuel line. So there's no fuel in that, but there is still going to be some in the bottom of that bowl that we can't get out. And we're gonna be dealing with that using the engineered fuel. But if you do have a full tank of fuel, what you wanna do at this point, take a pair of pliers, remove the fuel line clamp right there, disconnect the fuel line, hook it up into a jar, and simply turn on your fuel valve and let all of the fuel from your tank drain out into that container. If you didn't wanna go through all of this process, you could use a hose and siphon the fuel out of the fuel tank. However, you might not get all of it from the bottom of the fuel tank. And if you wanna see a video of that, I can link that in the top right of your screen because I do have a video showing you guys how to make a quick, simple little siphon using a hose and a little air nozzle. I am going to be using the Gulf Pro Fuels Alkalit 4T and this comes in a 946 milliliter can or one US quart. You don't have to use the whole thing. You can probably get away with just using about half of this can in your equipment. But I'm going to add in some of that fuel. Remember, you just have to get enough to pretty much fill the bowl of the carburetor. All right, so we have our engineered Gulf Pro fuels in the fuel tank. What we're gonna do now is turn on the fuel valve here and let that flow from the fuel tank into the carburetor. And then we're gonna take this thing outside. We're gonna fire it up and let it run on some of that engineered fuel to cycle the engineered fuel through the carburetor and into the engine. That's gonna be important. If you just put engineered fuel into your fuel tank, but you don't run it through your carburetor, you could run the risk of having some of that ethanol pump gas fuel inside of the carburetor. Now, the one thing that I wanted to mention is this engineered fuel is very sweet smelling. So when you run your equipment, you will definitely know when you're burning the engineered fuel versus burning just pump fuel. The exhaust fumes will smell different. So you'll know when the fuel pretty much transitions from pump fuel to your new fresh engineered fuel. So we'll get this thing outside, prime it a few times, get it fired up and let it run for a minute. Okay, so our fuel valve is on, our throttle is up, our choke is on. We're going to prime this until I can start hearing fuel going into the carb. That should be good there, maybe a couple more. And then I'm gonna pull it over, see if we can get it to fire. Like I said, let this thing run for a little while, circulate that engineered fuel through the carburetor. I can already smell it right away that it's burning. It almost smells like race fuel. I only put about a half a liter in this thing, so I don't want to run it too long. But like I said, I could smell the engineered fuel burning, so I know that all of the ethanol pump fuel has been burned off. This thing's still warm, so what we're gonna do is as we're removing this cover once again, I'm just gonna let this engine cool down a little bit because we do have to remove the little plastic heat shield here and I will remove the spark plug cap as well as remove the spark plug for the next step, which is gonna be fogging the cylinder, but we gotta let this engine cool down a little bit before we do that. However, at this point, we can also Turn the fuel shutoff valve to the off position, and this will prevent having a full tank of engineered fuel if you used a whole bunch of it from going into the carburetor. The off chance that you have a little piece of debris inside of the carburetor that gets hung up inside of the needle valve and the seat and leaves that needle valve open, all of that fuel would then drain into your carburetor through the intake manifold and then into the cylinder, past the piston rings, into the bottom end of your engine, diluting the engine oil, which is never good. So always use your fuel shutoff valve if you have one and it will prevent that from happening. So after you've drained the tank and the carburetor from the pump gas fuel, or you've added the engineered fuel and ran it through the carburetor, 
the next step is going to be fogging the cylinder. And that is going to be using some of this stuff. Doesn't really matter what brand you go with. I'm using some MotoMaster engine storage spray. This provides rust protection for combustion engines during periods of prolonged storage run for two and four cycle gasoline engines. So what is this stuff? It's basically just a little bit of lubricant in an aerosol can, and we're going to be spraying this into the cylinder. To do that, we're gonna to have to remove the spark plug, like I said, so we're just letting the engine cool down. And what this is going to do is it's going to lubricate the piston rings and the cylinder itself. Because even though you may have an aluminum piston, the piston rings and the cylinder sleeve themselves are made of steel. So they can rust and you can get a little bit of rust buildup in between the two to the point where I've even seen them completely seize the engine. So we'll go ahead and get that spark plug removed and fog the cylinder. Just like on that carb cover there, this one has the little thumb screws. Next up, we can remove our spark plug boot, also known as your high tension lead. This one takes a 5 8 inch socket and it does help to use a long extension just to help get that thing out of there because there is quite a bit of stuff in the way. You guys can see it's fairly deep down there. Now, if you read the instructions on this can, it does say spray 150 grams of this stuff, and this can is 340. Now, before we spray the cylinder, some guys are gonna say that you want your piston at top dead center, and other guys are gonna say that, no, you should have your piston at bottom dead center. In my opinion, since we're gonna be spraying this and we want the spray, or the fog to pretty much coat the cylinder and the piston rings, we would ideally want the piston to be at the lowest point so that the majority of the cylinder walls are exposed. And I can actually show you how to do that. It's very simple. With the spark plug out, you're just gonna use a wooden dowel and we're gonna go into the spark plug hole here and we're gonna lower it down and it's bottoming out on the piston right now. And then what we're gonna do is slowly pull on the recoil rope. And this, depending on what stroke the piston is on, this dowel is either gonna slightly move up or it's gonna slightly move down. And we're just gonna to try to find the bottom. So pulling, you guys can see it went up. So we pulled the recoil over to the point where it got to top dead center. And then I kept pulling it until the dowel went all the way down and just started to come back up again. That is, for the most part, bottom dead center. And then we're gonna get as close in there as we can and we're gonna start spraying. Okay, that's gonna be good enough. You guys can pretty much see how much I used, whether that was like 150 grams or not. I generally don't use more than that because of the next step that I'm gonna do. That is all going to go to the bottom of the cylinder at the piston top, and then it's going to start coating the piston rings. What we're gonna do now is slowly pull over the engine just to work the piston up and down. And what that is doing is it's going to be spreading the engine storage spray all over the cylinder walls and lubricating those piston rings as well as the cylinder sleeve. At this point, you guys can reinstall the spark plug. Now, you are going to wanna have a spare spark plug for the winter season because depending on how much engine storage spray you spray into your cylinder there, you could see a little bit of smoke come out of the exhaust when you first fire this snowblower up or first fire any of the snowblowers that you do this to. I have another five snowblowers that I have to do this to. And for the most part, they're gonna be much easier than this non-drainable carb. So we're going to be storing them over the summer and every single one of them is gonna fire up on the first or second pull. And if you follow these steps on your own snowblower, you'll ensure that it fires up on the first and second pull in the winter when you need it the most, just like this machine here did. So now that you've gotten all of the pump fuel that may or may not contain ethanol out of the fuel tank and out of the carburetor, we've got the engineered fuel in there that we've circulated through everything. We've got the fuel shutoff valve in the off position and we've fogged the cylinder. We are not going to be starting up this particular snowblower until the next winter season, which is gonna be in about eight or nine months.
Now let's say that you don't wanna do what I did here today. You wanna to be as cheap as possible. You don't wanna spend the time to fog the cylinder or spend the money with the engineered fuel, or you don't even wanna drain your fuel out of it. What you're gonna do, instead of storing this thing over the summer at the back of your garage or in your shed and just forgetting about it until next winter, you're gonna take this thing out every couple months, at least every two months, and you're gonna fire it up and you're gonna run it to the point where the fuel tank is almost dry. Then what you're gonna do is take some of your fresh fuel that you're going to be using for your lawnmower and you're going to put enough in the fuel tank to run that engine for at least a minute or two. And essentially what that's doing is it's going to be constantly cycling fresh fuel through your fuel tank and your carburetor, not allowing that old fuel that you would have stored your equipment with to break down. So if it's March right now, I'd be putting some fresh fuel into this thing, maybe a half of a liter, again, just enough to fire that thing up. Then again in May, pull the thing out, fire it up, a little bit of fresh fuel. Then again in July, so about every two months, again in September, and then again in November. And I can guarantee if you do it that way, your snowblower will fire up on the first or the second pull when you need it the most in the wintertime. Well, that's going to wrap up today's video. Using engineered or canned fuel will prevent your carburetor from gumming up due to all of that old pump gas fuel breaking down inside of that carburetor bowl, thus preventing your snowblower from starting when you need it the most. But with that being said, if you guys enjoyed today's video, think about leaving me a thumbs up. You know, it really helps me out. You can click here to subscribe and click over here to watch one of my previous videos. I upload every single week, so be sure to stop on by next week. Check channel up for new content. And as always, guys, thanks for watching.